my god my heart looks like a tomato how do you draw this diagram please help hey guys are you finding it difficult to draw the diagram of human heart do not worry because in this video i'm going to show you simple techniques of drawing a proportionate diagram of the human heart and to label it neatly and correctly so keep your pencil and paper ready and let's bring out the biology artist in you so we'll be drawing the diagram of the human heart as you can see i've taken the page in landscape mode and that is because i want to keep most of the labelings on the right hand side as much as is possible and maybe one or two labelings i might keep on the left but i will draw the diagram mostly off center now for the diagram of the human heart you have to keep in mind two things one that the axis of the heart is tilted it is not straight so we'll not draw the diagram straight the axis should be slightly tilted and two the proportion of the size of the atrium is to ventricle has to be kept in mind right so for that i will be drawing a line which is say around 12 cm that would be the total length of the heart now if the diagram if the length of the heart is 12 cm then i will divide the entire uh, length into 4 8 and 12 that is three portions i have divided it into three portions okay now the concept is that i will keep the length of the heart along with the atrium and the ventricle 12 cm and the 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 size of the atria should be around 4 cm or a slightly more than that that is why i have divided this line also i have to keep an eye on the uh, breadth of the heart so i will take about 3 and a half that is 3 and a half on this side and 3 and a half on that side so a total of 7 cm that should be the breadth it can be slightly more than that but i will keep it at that because when we are drawing our structure always goes beyond this framework so you see i have drawn a tilted line so that the heart also has this tilt now i will start drawing the diagram from the ventricle because that's the easiest thing to do so when i start from here this is the framework of the ventricle right so i will take this inside this will be the part of your valve and then i will darken the wall of the ventricle see i have come till the tip okay on this side as well i will take the valve i'll draw the valve and it will come till the tip now we have to draw the wall of the ventricle now for drawing the wall of the ventricle you have to remember that the wall of the ventricle is muscular and the left ventricle is the wall is thicker than the right ventricle so i will draw a thicker wall here which will come and meet here with the left hand side which has a slightly thinner wall not very thin which will meet here okay so the two lines come and meet near the central axis that we have drawn we are not making them meet each other right so from here the next thing that we will do is we will draw the interventricular septum so one line goes up like this and this one so we have drawn the interventricular septum now the same line will proceed up and it will become the wall of the pulmonary artery so of course you understand that this thickness has to reduce because the wall of the artery is are much thicker than the interventricular septum so this one goes out along the line and then this becomes one side of the wall of the pulmonary artery all right so that was the first part the second part is we'll have to draw the aorta so i'm drawing the aorta and the pulmonary artery all that first and then after that i'll draw the uh, atria so let us finish the pulmonary artery so here the pulmonary artery has gone to the right lung 
So we will have to make a branch that goes to the left lung. So from here it goes to the left lung and it comes down and enters where it enters into the right ventricle okay so what i have to now do is i will have to double line this wall because the wall is muscular obviously made up of smooth muscles so i will have to double line it Make sure that these lines are parallel to each other and you know that the semilunar valves are here. So we will draw the semilunar valves. So we have drawn the semilunar valve. This is one side of the semilunar valve and the other side of the semilunar valve will come out from here. So like this so you have the semilunar valve there. So this becomes your pulmonary artery. Now we will draw the aorta. So you know that the aorta goes from the front of the pulmonary artery, right? So the aorta will have to go from the front of the pulmonary artery and it has to come into the left ventricle. So I will first draw the part which comes into the left ventricle. See this is the part that comes into the left ventricle. Very simple, you just draw one line comes into the left ventricle and then double line it. Again this has semilunar valves. So, the semilunar valve here and the part of the semilunar valve on this side. Okay. And this has to continue. Now, when you are continuing this, make sure that you imagine a dotted line and continue from here. Do not start continuing from here because this is a tube. So, the continuation should be visible. So, this continues from here and takes a turn right similarly if you just imagine that this is a tube then obviously there is going to be a left wall which continues from here and it ends here the rest of it we can't see it has gone behind now since the outer goes from the front of the pulmonary artery we will erase this portion so now as you can see we have erased this portion so that it seems like the aorta has come from the front. Of course, you have to double line this. So here I will double line because these are all walls. Right, so what did we do? We first drew the ventricles, then the septum which went out as the pulmonary artery and then we have drawn the aorta. Now our next job is to draw the atria. So how do we draw the atria? Let us draw the right atria first. So for the right atria as you know it receives two blood vessels. One is the superior vena cava, the other one is the inferior vena cava. So when the superior, the superior vena cava brings bl blood from the upper part of the body and the inferior vena cava brings blood from the lower part of the body, right? So when I am drawing this uh, inferior and superior vena cava, I will imagine, see the, remember I had drawn a line which was three and a half, three and a half centimeter on each side. So I will have to start from here, from the uh, pulmonary artery and I will have to imagine a chamber which is not more than three and a half centimeters. This I am just drawing a rough outline, right? Now I will draw it properly. So how do I do it? Coming, this is the super, in superior vena cava which comes and joins. So this is the superior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava and then it joins the ventricle. So what have you got? You have got a chamber with two blood vessels. So now we will have to draw the wall of the atria. Now you please remember this that the thickness of the wall of the ventricle should be more than the thickness of the wall of the atria because you remember that the wall of the atria they are thinner because they have to pump blood only till the ventricle. So they do not need a very thick walls. Okay, So 
we are drawing the walls of the atria and along with that we are drawing the wall of the superior and the inferior vena cava okay so that's one side of the atria done now for the next eight next uh, side that is for the left atria you know that they receive the left atrium receives uh, two pulmonary veins in view so there are four pulmonary veins but in one view of the human heart we can draw only two pulmonary veins so it starts from here we'll draw two pulmonary veins now notice this that the diameter of the pulmonary veins is narrower than the diameter of the superior and the inferior vena cava. So, the superior and inferior vena cava they are thicker, they are larger in diameter. Pulmonary veins are narrower in diameter. So, I draw two pulmonary veins and then I bring the atria here. So, the atria meets the ventricle, right. Now, I will simply just erase all these rough reference lines that I had drawn so that the diagram looks clean. So, now I will have to make sure that the wall is double lined. So, again the wall of the atria narrower, pulmonary vein even narrower. And that is done. Okay. Now, I am deleting all the other reference lines that I had drawn this vertical line also and the horizontal line I have already deleted uh, erased. So, I am erasing all these lines, right. All that we have to do now is draw the tendons which attach the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves to the wall of the ventricle. So, I will use very light hands to draw a few lines from here and a few lines from here which are the tendons to which the bicuspid and the tricuspid valves are attached. So, these help in the opening of the valves if you remember and the diagram of the heart is done. Now, coming to the labeling part, do not forget to give a heading or a footer for this entire diagram. So, for the labeling what I will do is I will draw a dotted line. and all my labeling should be on the other side of the dotted line. I will have to make sure that no lines crisscross that is I will not draw a line from here and another line from here. So, lines should not crisscross in between. So, I will start drawing from the topmost portion. I will use a ruler. I will first label the pulmonary artery then the aorta. Whichever structure is coming first, I am labeling that first so that you know I do not have a problem with space. So, I am labeling that first. Then I will label the pulmonary vein. Now, since there are two, I will draw this line and then I will show both the pulmonary veins, the left atria, the semilunar valves. Since there are two, I will label both. Then the tricuspid valve, again I will show both. Then I have the interventricular septum, then I have, then I have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So, two things I have not labeled on the right side because then that would be cutting through the diagram. One, the superior and the inferior vena cava. So, these two I will label on this side superior and inferior vena cava and the right atrium. Okay. Also, the tricuspid valve. These three or four parts I am labeling on the left hand side because I want the diagram to look neat. I do not want lines cutting through the diagram. Okay. So, now let us label. Always use block letters for labeling and start from the dotted line. Since I have labeled both, so I am writing veins. So, as you can see we have drawn the pulmonary artery which carries blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, the aorta which carries blood from the left ventricles to the entire body, pulmonary veins which carry blood from the lungs into the left atrium, 
This is the left atrium which receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. The semilunar valves which guard the opening of the aorta into the left ventricle and the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle. Bicuspid or mitral valve which guards the atrioventricular aperture in on the left side of the heart. Interventricular septum which divides the two ventricles. This is the right ventricle which, ventricle which receives deoxygenated blood from the right atria. The left ventricle which receives oxygenated blood from the left atria. This is the right atrium which receives deoxygenated blood from the entire body. The superior vena cava which brings blood from the upper part of the body and the inferior vena cava which brings blood from the lower part of the body. The tricuspid valve which guards the opening of the atrium and the, into the ventricle on the right side of the human heart. So now if you are just asked to draw the diagram of the human heart your work is done. But if you are asked to show the movement or the flow of blood through human heart then you have to show the movement through this. So for that what we will do is we will use solid lines for oxygenated blood and we will use dotted lines for deoxygenated blood and we will show this in as an index we, you can make a separate index here which you will show in the diagram you will have to make this index otherwise it will not be clear which blood is did indicated with which kind of arrows. So you know that the deoxygenated blood comes from the different parts of the body into the right atrium. So I will draw two dotted lines bringing the deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. From the right atrium it goes into the right ventricle. So the dotted line comes into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle it goes through the pulmonary artery. It goes uh, through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. From the lung it comes back as oxygenated blood. Now see I am using solid lines. It comes back as oxygenated blood into the left atria. From there it comes into the left ventricle again solid lines. From there it goes into the aorta and the aorta carries it to the different parts of the body. So this is how you can show the direction of flow of blood through the human heart with the help of solid lines and dotted lines. So that is all about this diagram. Keep it as neat as possible. My advice to you would be when you are drawing diagrams related to biology, do not use strokes like this. Uh, these kind of strokes are mainly for paintings and sketches. We will always use a solid line whenever you are drawing a circle. Let's say you have to make sure that the two ends meet and it is not like this which makes the diagram look very very untidy and unscientific. So that is all about the diagram of the human heart uh, with showing the flow of blood through the human heart. Hope you found this video useful and now you can easily draw the structure of the human heart. Do hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. And do check out the full courses on our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app. We have courses for physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics and computer coding. Links are given below. Stay connected with Manocha Academy and keep learning.